untimely passing of 20. Suspicion surrounds the untimely passing of 25-year-old Shanquilla Robinson of Charlotte, North Carolina. Here are the details. Shanquilla and a group of friends seen here went to Cabo, Mexico on a trip on the 28th of October. Her mother says that she spoke to her daughter on Friday while she was having dinner. And sadly, that was the last time she spoke to her daughter. On that Saturday, she received a phone call from Khalil Cook, who is said to be Shanquilla's best friend of nine years, informing Miss Robinson that her daughter wasn't feeling well and that they were going to call the doctor. At the time of the call, the doctor hadn't arrived. However, she was informed by members of her party that they suspected that her unresponsiveness was due to alcohol poisoning. The Robinsons were informed later on that sadly, Shanquilla had passed away from alcohol poisoning. Then the remaining parties departed back to the States a day early, leaving her there. Following the Robinsons receiving notification that she had passed from alcohol poisoning, an autopsy was conducted, which revealed that her neck had been broken, she had a back spasm, and there was a crack in her spinal cord. Additionally, there are images and a video floating around on the internet to validate the parents' suspicion of her cause of death. The video reveals that she was involved in an altercation with Dejanae Jackson. Also, in the video, there is a male voice telling her to fight back, and she is heard saying no, as Jackson continues to physically assault this inebriated young woman. Finally, her so-called best friend took to social media to say the following. Uh, anyway, I got on my flight to Cabo at 11 o'clock. Um, as I've seen in the post before this, it take three hours to get to Cabo. Meanwhile, all this stuff happened on Friday. I don't know nothing of it, don't know nothing about it, don't know why it happened, boom. So I'm thinking I'm gonna turn up. My birthday was the last week, October 22nd. Y'all can see that, cause I've been on my page. So I'm like, let me extend my birthday and I'm gonna go to this trip. Cause I got asked to go on the trip in June, but I didn't reply cause I didn't know what I was doing for my birthday since the next birthday was the next week after mine. Oh, yes, I left on Saturday, Saturday. The trip was from Friday to Monday. This indeed is a tragedy because not only did this young woman go on a trip with who she thought were her friends, according to the details that are being revealed little by little, she was accosted and attacked and left clinging to life in a foreign country, all by herself, naked. Once more details are revealed, I will let you all know, but my God, not everyone is your friend, even when they say they are, unfortunately. Send your condolences to the family in the comment section and take care. Suspicion surrounds come to light pertaining to the... Some new information has come to light pertaining to the untimely demise of 25-year-old Shanquella Robinson of Charlotte, North Carolina. Plus, Shanquella's father details what was told to him, as well as the independent autopsy results. The first is that not only was there an altercation between her and a woman identified as Dejanae, but another video has surfaced where it shows that this woman who is identified as Winter was the individual that allegedly delivered the final physical action that ultimately led to her demise. This Winter character in the video has Shanquella in a chokehold, and then she body slams her. After she does that, Shanquella never moves again. How vicious. And these people are supposed to be this woman's friends. Second, three parties involved Khalil, the supposed best friend, and the two women that allegedly assaulted her brought Shanquilla's belongings back to her mother's home, where it is now alleged that Shanquilla was missing $10,000. Now we all know that one must declare to the country that they're entering, that they have that large a sum of money. So if it goes missing, which is being reported now, it will be easily traceable, which is why this new information has come to light. Last, her father was interviewed and he had this to say. A friend to my daughter, a friend did call me who, who had my number, who know how much I care about my daughter. Right. They did call and say, um, 
it was a fight in the house, but they weren't sure. You know, but then the alcohol story came out because that alcohol poison did not sound right for me. No, right. not at all. Right. Mm -mm. right. No, she don't drink like that. I know that for a fact. Yeah. So the man says he found her sitting up in the chair or either sitting up in the bed. Sitting up in the bed or sitting in the chair with a broke neck and a spine. She died yeah. at 3 p.m. Now you said you arrived at that house on that video you said at 3.30 something. So if you arrived there, sir, if you arrived there, it should have been 12.30 or 12.45. You got there at that house. So evidently she had to be alive when you were there. So in that scenario, you saw the condition that she was in and you saw the bruises that she was, you know, on her. You should have you should have called the medics or somebody should have called all of y'all. Y'all could have carried her. She ain't about 120 pounds, 125 pounds. But y'all chose not to. Y'all chose to got your thing, got out of there and got her um uh, her suitcase. And for what our statement says, one of y'all called a taxi cab and and went to an airport hotel and one of you called back to the states and asked somebody what to do one of you all called back y'all panicked and one of y'all asked what to do so allegedly not only did they assault this woman they ended this woman's life and robbed her under the guise of a friend's birthday celebration who didn't even show up until a day later and allegedly fled the country the next day following his friend's passing this is certainly not the last. We will hear about this developing story, and my hope is that all the parties involved receive their just due. No one deserves to come to their end the way Miss Shanquella Robinson did. No one. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and take care. Comes the news. We've all in a quick turn of events. Comes the news we've all been waiting for. Breaking news in the Shanquella Robinson death investigation. In just the past two hours, ABC News confirmed that Mexican authorities issued an arrest warrant for one of her friends. Tonight, ABC News confirmed international authorities plan to charge one of Robinson's friends with femicide. They say that person was, quote, the direct aggressor. It is important to note the prosecutor did not name the friend, but did say it is an American. Robinson's mother told ABC News she just wants justice for her daughter. So the way that they did her, you know, beating her like that and, and, and making a video of it, that was so sad that so many people was there and they just stood there and watched and didn't even try to stop it. Now they'll start talking, I bet you, one by one. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Take care. In a quick turn to Shanquilla Robinson, the 25-year-old native of Charlotte, North Carolina, where she was on vacation with her friends and never returned, comes more details about her final moments. There was an initial report saying that on her death certificate, she had passed away within 15 minutes after suffering her spinal cord injury. However, now that the FBI has joined the case, the shocking report is that there was a doctor present on the scene and she attempted to treat Shanquella after her injury, which she was told was alcohol related by her so-called friends. She was alive for up to three hours post being injured, which is a stark contrast to what was being reported on her death certificate. The police states that a Dr. Carolina Gutierrez, who is from the American Medical Center, states that she was with Shanquilla for up to three hours prior to her being pronounced deceased. The police report states that the person who called for help was actually Winter Donovan, the woman they allege delivered the final action that led to Shanquilla's demise. And then when the doctor arrived, she was told that Shanquilla had been drinking a lot of alcohol. Then the doctor took her vital signs and stated she was stable at the time but she was dehydrated and unable to talk. But it gets worse. The doctor states that she wanted to transfer Shanquilla to the hospital, but her so-called friends insisted that she be treated at the villa. And that's where the doctor administered the IVs, and it was unsuccessful, as we know. 
After an hour, the doctor states that Shanquella suffered a seizure around 4.20 p.m. That's when Winter, who identified herself as a friend, called 911 to request an ambulance. And while this was happening, the doctor states that Shanquella was having difficulty breathing and her pulse was low as they gave her CPR. Now, the person who was giving her CPR was one of the friends, but who it is was not stated along with the doctor. After three hours, her heart stopped beating at 5.25 p.m. Additionally, the paramedics gave Shanquella 14 rounds of CPR, five doses of adrenaline, and discharged the defibrillator a total of six times with no success. Her time of death is reported to be that of 5.57 p.m. There's more to follow because the details are becoming clearer and clearer that it's not what we thought it was. Let's keep this young woman's family in our prayers because this most certainly is a difficult time for all of them. In a new update,